Yo, it's been seven months. For seven months, the official Flipper Zero firmware has been quiet. In that time, we've gotten insights on the upcoming Flipper One, the opening of pre-orders for the Busy Bar, and a whole lot of community speculation. The question on everyone's mind has been a little uneasy. With all this new hardware on the horizon, is the original Flipper Zero being left behind? Well, the wait is finally over. The Flipper team just dropped version 1.4.2 two days ago, and it's our first look into the Flipper's future. Now, is this just a minor patch, or is it proof that the Flipper is still getting the love it deserves? Well, I'm Jay Blanks, and in this video, we're going to dissect this update piece by piece to answer that question. Let's find out if it was worth the wait. But first, a crucial reminder, the Flipper Zero is a powerful tool designed for security research and education. Always ensure you have explicit written permission before testing, scanning, or interacting with any system, device, or network that you do not personally own. Acting responsibly and ethically is what allows this community to innovate and thrive. So don't be the person who ruins it for everyone. Now let's get into the update. So what have the developers been pouring their time into for over half a year? At first glance, the change log might not be as explosive as previous updates, but when you dig in, you see a clear strategy, a shift from rapid fire features to foundational improvements. So it all starts with a critical update to Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE. Now the change log notes improvements to pairing security, but that kind of puts it mildly. It seems like the team discovered that existing device pairings were potentially susceptible to a specific type of brute force attack. And to fix this, it seems they've overloaded the pairing process. And this is so important that the team is highly recommending that after you update to 1.4.2, you go into your flipper settings, unpair all of your connected devices, and then repair them. It's almost like discovering your front door lock was pickable and the manufacturer sent you a high-end security replacement. You don't see the difference, but it's a fundamental security enhancement that's pretty essential for a device like this. This wasn't about adding a flashy new app. This was about reinforcing the very foundation of the flippers connectivity. Next up, the star of the show for many users, sub gigahertz. Now, the flippers ability to understand and interact with wireless signals is its bread and butter, and this update delivers a feast. Now, there are nine new protocols that were added in this release. Every time you try to analyze a remote and seeing that unknown protocol message, it's because the signal wasn't in the flipper's dictionary. This update is like adding nine new languages to its vocabulary, which increases the chances of getting a successful capture in the wild and shows that even while they're building new hardware, the team is still deep in the weeds expanding the core capabilities of the original device. While updating security and core features is cool, this update also delivered a massive payload for the power users and developers in the community. NFC received a huge upgrade. Now, the single biggest change is the introduction of a new NFC command line interface, or the CLI. This gives advanced users a way to perform low-level interactions and exploration, getting their hands dirty with the hardware in a way the graphical interface doesn't allow. Alongside this, there were major improvements to the Felica support, adding the ability to traverse service directories and dump all unencrypted blocks and even dump entire systems. For MyFair Ultralight C, the team added functionality for dictionary attacks and key management. New parser for cards like Banapass and Amusement IC were also included. 
Now, this isn't just polish. It's a whole new toolkit for NFC researchers. And for the developer community, this update was a game changer. New JavaScript bindings were added that allow creators to build advanced custom user interfaces for their apps without having to code everything in low level C. It seems they've even provided examples showing how to build widgets, buttons, and complex layouts. So why does this matter? Because it dramatically lowers the barrier to entry for creating powerful, good looking flipper applications. In my opinion, it's a strategic move to empower the community to build the next wave of incredible tools, signaling a long-term investment in the Flipper ecosystem itself. So a long development cycle also means one more thing, more time to fix all the small annoying bugs and add the quality of life features the community has been asking for. This release is packed with them, showing that the developers are actually listening. For iButton users, the firmware now supports writing to TM01 Dallas ID keys. And over on the LF RFID side, there's a brilliant little update for anyone who's ever scanned a lost pet. Now, when reading FDXB animal tags, the flipper will now automatically display the country name, saving you the step of having to look up the ISO country code yourself. It also seems like bad USB got more reliable with fixes for key combination handling that made some complex scripts fail particularly on Windows. The infrared app was also beefed up with new universal remotes for HVAC, TV, and audio players, and a handy auto scroll for remote buttons with long names. Even the HID or the HID remote, which turns your flipper into a Bluetooth mouse, got an upgrade. You can now configure which mouse button the auto clicker uses. And for those who love the command line, there's a fun new buzzer command to play tones directly from the CLI. Now, these might seem like small tweaks, but together they represent a significant effort to polish the user experience across the entire platform. So let's circle back to our original question. After seven months and with new hardware on the way, has Flipper Zero development slowed down? Well, the answer is yes and no. The pace of new flashy headlining features has changed. But version 1.4.2 proved that development hasn't slowed, it's more like matured. This was not a simple patch, but more of a strategic foundational upgrade that highlights the team's priorities. While juggling the development of Flipper One and other projects, they delivered an update focused on three key areas. First, security with the critical BLE pairing overhaul. Second, capability with the massive expansion of sub gigahertz protocols and the deep new tool sets for NFC. And third, community by empowering developers with new UI tools and responding directly to user feedback with a dozen quality of life fixes. In short, this release wasn't about distracting us with shiny new objects. It was an investment in the future of the Flipper Zero ecosystem. It proves the device is not being left behind. It's being hardened, refined, and set up for the long haul. Well, the wait was long, but the result is a more secure, more capable, and more user-friendly platform. It shows that even with new products on the horizon, the original Flipper Zero remains the core of the ecosystem. But that's my analysis. I want to hear from you. Have you updated to version 1.42 yet? What's the most exciting change for you? And how do you feel about the new development pace? Do you think the Flipper Zero is still a priority for the Flipper team? Definitely let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you found this breakdown useful, hit that like button. It's free and it only takes a second. And if you want to stay updated about the Flipper Zero or learn more about the upcoming Flipper One, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm Jay Blanked. 
Thanks for watching. Peace.